this morning with our economic outlook for 2024 is Ken McMillan. He's a member of our Monmouth Rotary Club as well as a member of the Warren Henderson Farm Bureau Board. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to see you. And uh, I did not get a chance to be at the event where you gave your uh, economic outlook at our Rotary. I had another engagement, but we always like to take the time to have you come in and tell us all about it. Well, just as a little background, uh, Rotary has been doing this uh, economic outlook for 35 years or so. Ralph Whiteman <clears throat> was one of the people that was in Rotary when this started, and they have brought in somebody to talk about the economy. And then uh, probably the, the real point is for the Rotarians to sit around the tables and make predictions for the next year about what the interest rate will be, what the inflation rate will be, what the unemployment rate will be, what GDP growth will be, what the price of beef will be, what the price of gas will be, and so forth. And so, uh, but before they do that each year, they bring in somebody to talk about the state of the economy, and it's been my privilege to do it for about 10 years. And so that's the way we, we started. And as I told them when I began, you know, I look back over the speeches, the presentations I'd given for the last several years, and I said I could really just give the same speech because one of the big problems is inflation and understanding inflation. Another one is to accept the fact that, that the, the Federal Reserve System has uh, main responsibility for the, the uh, soundness of the currency which relates to inflation and that they kept interest rates way too low, too long, and, and that led into the situation we were in. But then I really pointed out that inflation is not price increases. Inflation is an increase in the overall level of prices in the economy. It amounts to the dollar being able to buy less. It, and the word inflation you can think of it as somebody uh, blew some hot air into the dollar bill, and it says it's a dollar, but it doesn't buy as much as it used to. And so we've had a, a long period of inflation. And COVID can get, take some of the blame because the economy nearly, nearly shut down during, during COVID. But the part of the big problem was um, all of a sudden uh, the federal government wanted to make sure that there, there was plenty of, of at least survivable money in people's pockets. And so a lot of people got an influx of dollars. Even some of the unemployment uh, compensation went higher than it had been before. And, and they were suddenly freed from having to pay tax on that unemployment compensation. And the problem was people were getting increased money, but they weren't getting it as a result of producing more goods and services. So the demand for goods and services went up because of increased income. And in fact, in many places, the quantity of goods and services went down because the economy had not been moving. And that is the recipe for inflation. We're still dealing with it. Inflation has come down. But when inflation comes down, that doesn't mean prices come down. That means they're not increasing as fast as they were before. So. We're, we're into a, a difficult period of adjustment, and there are so many things in the economy that are uncertain, partially because it's an election year, and, and nearly everything becomes more uncertain in uh, an election year. Um, then I talked about a lot of the things that you could look at in the economy and try to make a judgment. Number one, the stock market's been good, uh, and, and that's reason for encouragement. Unemployment is low. That's a reason for, employ, uh, for encouragement. But one of the things I pointed out is you got to look at what's going on in the economy. you got to look at what, what politicians uh, are recommending in the economy. And, and you've just got to have your eyes open to see what is, is going on. So the stock market is good. Uh, on the other hand, our Jameson Center the director of the Jameson Center works closely with Rotary, and she pointed out that there's about a 96% or 92% increase in the demand for services from the Jameson Center. Now, 
that's contrary to anybody being euphoric because the stock market is good and so forth. There have been record uh, withdrawals from 401k accounts and credit card debt debt is reaching almost a, a, a record. There are some Dollar Tree stores that are closing down. On the other hand, Kroger's going to spend several million dollars beefing up their grocery stores over in the, in the Peoria area. I drive by automobile dealerships where once you could barely see five cars out in front, even the big ones over, over in Galesburg. All of a sudden, you drive by, there are cars and trucks for sale. That's encouraging. On the other hand, we just got news yesterday, I think, that one of our uh, auto dealerships, the Coons Auto Dealership here, is going to be closing. So we here see the good news, and, and we see the bad news. Now, real estate costs have gone up, then they level off. But home insurance costs have clearly go, gone up. Anybody who's paid their, their home insurance knows that those costs are going up. Real estate taxes eventually are going to go up. Why? Inflation has increased the assessed value of homes, businesses, and, and farms for that reason. Taxes are, are all local units of government have a limit to the percentage of value that they can tax. And, and those percentages haven't gone up. But when the percentage is multiplied times and increased in the value of the property, that means the taxes people pay are going to go up. Probably not this year, because this year's real estate taxes are based on last year's value. But in the coming years, they're, they're going to be going up. Um, there are an awful lot of other things that are going on, but one of the things I did in the speech is look at the things that I see in the headlines and just give people some idea of things that they uh, maybe should be leery of. You want me to go over some of those? Sure. Um, number one, the COVID dollars that come to local governments, come to businesses, and so forth, have, have pretty much run out. Uh, the state of Illinois was in a pretty good position because they could claim to have a balanced budget when a lot of federal money was coming in. Suddenly, that federal money has dried up, so they're talking about deficits. Uh, they're still spending uh, a lot of money. I don't know where it's going to come from, but all of a sudden, they're talking about deficits. Now, Iowa uh, just has some legislation. I heard discussions this morning and last night. Uh, they're going to increase the minimum teachers' salaries. And I was a teacher. I understand. You know, you feel good when you know that you're going to work hard and take home more pay. But somebody has to pay. Does that mean property taxes are going to go up in Iowa? Does that mean they're going to find other taxes to go up? If that were to be done in Illinois, that, that's a sign that some things are going to be going to have to be dinner, different. Uh, Peterson Healthcare has, has serious uh, financial difficulties. But most of those, as I have read and followed pretty closely, because it's very important to us here in Monmouth, a lot of it was from the slow payments that come from the federal government for people who, who are benefiting from federal benefits and the very slow payments that come from Springfield. Uh, and it, it appears that you know that's going to be positive. There are some local businesses that still can't find the workers they need to operate. And one of the places I go for lunch occasionally, uh, especially on Wednesday when they have ribs, and on Monday when they have tacos, is, is Papa's. You know, Papa's used to be open seven days a week. Papa's used to, to have a, a early in the, almost early in the morning to late in the evening following. Now, because it's, it's the only way they can succeed and succeed well, they basically open at 10.30 or 11. They're open to about 9 at night. That means they can have one full shift of people they can count on day after day after day and, and, and operate. And that's just an example of how the economy still has some weakness. Uh, it's difficult to, difficult hire, to hire people. Government's talking about increasing regulations. Now, we all benefit from some protections that come from federal regulations. 
But if we're going to have federal regulations, whether it's on farmers, whether it's on small business, whether it's on banks, whatever it happens to be, that means there has to be an additional, additional number of federal employees hired in order to run those regulations. And any business that has to comply with a regulation means they either have to hire more people, put more <coughs> resources into that, and that costs money. Those things all contribute to uh, inflation. We saw the pictures day after day after day of all the Texas fires in western Texas where they raise a lot of cattle. And uh, one of the things that's hard for people to understand, um, you know, with, with uh, chickens you can hatch baby chickens in three weeks. And, and with pigs you can get baby pigs in three months, three weeks, and three days, and a few months and you got more pork chops. With cattle, and particularly after a lot of those cattle were destroyed in fire and their feed was destroyed in fire, it, it takes more than two years to get another beefsteak. You've got to keep a female that could be butchered. You've got to keep her back uh, till she's old enough to conceive. Then once uh, she's bred, it takes 10 months to get a baby calf. And when a baby calf is born, it takes eight or nine, 10 months before you've got, got beef. Uh, now, the federal government may say, oh, well, those meat packers are gouging us. You know, that's, they don't even understand that, that supply and demand really works in this case. Um, there are proposals to increase corporate taxes. And I just point out, when you, everybody wants somebody else to pay, pay their tax bill, but when a corporation's taxes go up, that money has to come from somewhere. Where does it come from? Number one, either employees are going to make less because the money's going to go, go to the government instead. The stockholders are going to get less. And you know who many of the stockholders are? They're the senior citizens like me who are retired, who are depending on investments uh, that basically live on. So, so if the dividends are going to go down, that means a lot of people are going to be hurt. Or the big thing that happens, the corporations are going to ha have to raise the price on the product they sell. Well, who bears that burden? The consumer does. And so there are a lot of times when, when it sounds really nice politically because if you make it sound like some big old corporation is going to bear the burden, and they totally ignore that citizens, either as stockholders or as workers or as customers are going to pay the bill. We're talking with Ken McMillan. He is with the Monmouth Rotary Club here in Monmouth, as well as the Warren Henderson Farm Bureau, retired economics professor from Monmouth College as well. How long did you teach economics? 25. 25, 25 years. years. Boy, have things changed. They have. In 25 years, but yet in some ways still the same. Well, the, the student who comes in, you know, is uh, eager and uh, sometimes well-prepared and really wants to get to the end of the tunnel, which is that degree. And if a professor can find a way to connect with that student and move that student and get that student to, to see the light, you know, feel the lights coming on as, as they begin to understand some of these things about the economy, then it's, it, and for me, it was a very satisfying 25 years. And my fear, I shouldn't say fear, but one of the things that really woke me up about the economy is the brutal realization of the, I think it's Tyson plant closing, is it in Perry, Iowa? 1,600 Absolutely. jobs? Absolutely. That was a shock. Yep. That is a shock, and that is very similar to Monmouth, Illinois, Absolutely. with our processing plant and the number of jobs that they employ. So, um, gosh, that's a, do we have any idea why they had to close? No, you know, I've listened to a, a lot of, a lot of uh, the Quad Cities covers that because, you know, they're close to that. And there were relatively few reasons given. One of them was perhaps that that plant has not been as state-of-the-art modernized as our Smithfield plant here. But I don't know that. Uh, and, and, you know, today, big corporations, especially with some foreign ownership, uh, you don't know where the decisions are being, sure. being made. So, no, but that, but that has to be. And that community already had a problem with the storm and so forth in their community. So, 
I mean, that school system was under stress. Sure. Uh, and, and this this is going to make that community a, a, a basket case for a while. Okay. All right, Ken. Um, it is 849. Is there anything else you want to share with our audience about the 2024 economic outlook? Uh, no. I, I think people need to be cautious. It is an election year. Uh, and we have a lot of press that's not as well informed as our local uh, WRAM uh, staff, and you're going to hear a lot of crazy things. And it's 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 t- it, it is a good time to understand that uncertainty is the biggest factor in the economy. And basically, you need to hang on, be prepared. Uh, Not that things are necessarily going to be any better after November, but at least uh, somebody will then have uh, the reins and and we'll be able to hear what plans are made. Okay. Ken McMillan, thank you very much. I'll see you at the Ag Roundtable in about an hour. I'll be there.